being back at Centos Center, how you guys are undefeated here this year. Just how confident do you guys feel playing home games here at Centos Center? Yeah, it's definitely easier. Um, you know, it's always nice to be in front of a home crowd. It's always nice to be where we practice every day. Uh, we got a pretty good feel for our gym. Um, you know, I think the fans play a huge part of it. It's a really hard place to play because they make it that way. The uh, big challenge with Georgetown, sorry, Jesse, um, is, is Govan. Uh, he's, he's had a really, really nice year, big year in rebounding and offensively. Is he, as a big man, kind of the, the big person to look at as far as the scouting report goes in this game? Yeah, uh, I think Georgetown is an interesting team. They have two guys that they really play through the post a lot on, uh, Govan being one of them. Um, and he's done a really good job of you know, being kind of a, a relaxing presence for them in their offense. Um, and I think that they're just honestly a, a very talented, a very skilled team. Um, you know, maybe their record doesn't show it as much, but uh, I think that they've competed with just about everybody at one point or another. And uh, you know, we, we're going to have a battle coming to our place. Sean, I wanted to ask about Karim Cantor. From your perspective, what are the biggest differences you've seen in him from maybe way back when practice first started, him being new here, to, to now and what he's accomplishing? Yeah, uh, I mean, he's, we've always known he was going to be able to do stuff like this. He's a scoring uh, stretch five, I guess you'd call it. Um, but he, he has an incredible ability to play on the perimeter, which I think really messes with a lot of teams, especially when you're trying to scout for it. Um, it's not really much you can do about it, honestly, especially when you have uh, other big fives trying to guard him too, which he's capable of going inside of the post and working with them or stretching them out, kind of doing both. Uh, so it doesn't really surprise us, but I think that he's finally playing with a, a lot of confidence, especially on the offensive end. What, what was your role as a senior and, and being alongside him uh, in, in kind of helping him adjust going from Wisconsin Green Bay and the Horizon League to this level and, and new teammates and a new environment? How did you kind of help him along? Yeah, I think we both helped each other. I think we're both looking for a great senior year. Uh, I think that we go against each other a lot in practice every day, um, and you know, Tyreek included. And I think all three of us have done pretty good things at one point or another this season. Um, so I think the fact that he's shining right now really shows, especially because his strength is the offensive end. I think Tyreek's strength is the defensive end, and I think I'm somewhere in between. So uh, you know, we're trying to kind of each game is a little bit different for every for each guy. So I think uh, there are games that suit more stretching teams out, which is where he does really good, and St. John's is one of those teams. And I think that there are other teams where we might need Tyreek to come in and just dominate the glass and get a ton of offensive rebounds and defensive boards and protect the paint. So. There's an idea, Sean. Yeah, go for it. That um, in, in college basketball, that teams are always really guilty of what you do with the margins. Remember, when you're halfway through the conference schedule, Yeah, it is. It's definitely something we want. Um, you know, it's it's hard. Uh, you know, Villanova is a really good team. They really don't drop games all that often, so we got to capitalize if they ever do. Uh, and you know, we, obviously, we got to take care of our job against them as well. Um, but outside of that, I think every game we play in the Big East, we know it's basically for a conference championship, especially the regular season, which is something I think we all want. But I know me personally, I would rather a conference championship during the regular season or more than the uh, tournament. So it's just one of those things that we have to come to prepare to play every single night. We can't, uh, you know, drop a game to really anybody in this league because it's kind of the way the Big East is. Everyone's capable of beating everybody on any, any given night, and we've seen that in some of the scores. Sean, forgive me if you uh, already addressed this, but I was one, I'm glad you're here today. As I wanted to ask you about Georgetown under John Thompson versus Georgetown under Patrick Ewing, do you see a big difference between the two? And uh, what, what maybe are the common threads between the two teams and the two regimes? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's night and day, the style of play they want. Uh, they're much more up-tempo. They're much more uh, focused on throwing the ball inside. Uh, I had always wondered in the past, they had these big guys who, you know, were really kind of bruisers and tough guys to keep off the glass sometimes. And uh, I wondered why they didn't play through them more. And now you're seeing them really do that this year. Uh, they ran that Princeton offense, all the backdoor cuts, and you talked about the crossovers. Uh, just watching uh, some of the clips and film the other day, you can still see some of the guys that have been there for a while and have played in that style of offense. They just make backdoor cuts, and it's you know great passes right for layups sometimes. And it's just it kind of happens more naturally in their offense now rather than being a forced motion. And this is something I wouldn't expect you to pay too much attention to on the player side, but you know in. 
major college sports, one um, one hiring can have a drastic effect on the league. Have you noticed anything significant change in this league as a result of Patrick's hire? Because it was a big hire at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're definitely they're playing. Um, you know, for, for a first year in the Big East, I think that they're really battling hard um, under a new coach, I mean. Um, and I think that they're only going to get better from here. I think that he's going to be a good coach. I think that he's really uh, gotten his guys playing uh, in a confident uh, style. They're, they're really going out there and just kind of playing to, the, to their strengths more than anything. Um, I think they're playing together. Uh, they're, they're a tough team. And like I said, I know their record might not show that they're as good as uh, some of the other teams in the conference. But uh, I mean, they're, they're battling with every single team that they play. Does starting a season series with a team, I guess it's not late. It's, you know, it's early February. But um, it is a little bit later to be starting a season series with one of these teams in your league. Does that create, would you have liked to have seen a team Maybe say at the at the start of conference play, or how do, how does that work? Playing a team twice in a couple of weeks in Jan in uh, February. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, part of it has to do with the bye week we had last week, just kind of the way the scheduling works out. We don't have too much control over it, but uh, you know, it, it's definitely uh, means the the first game is always going to be a battle, just because you want to compete. But you know, the second game is going to be a battle. There's really when you see each other that close, you remember all these fine details. You don't really lose anything. Um, as far as scouting goes, and it's only you're only going to get more in detail. So, uh, I honestly, there's a lot of times when we play these kind of two games in between or three games in between uh, playing the same team. It's the second one's always a bigger battle. As a big, do you get a little bit excited to? Obviously, your coach kind of played that role a little bit, but uh, is there a little extra excitement to go out and do your job in the presence of uh, a Patrick Ewing type? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely cool. It's uh, it's cool to play against a guy who played at such an incredible level. Um, so I'm sure he's he's got some uh, tricks that he's taught his bigs that I'll get to see and uh, hopefully just be able to do our best job against them and really uh, try and limit them down low.